Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Others on the internet. What is this thing? Hope I got my phone shut off if I turn this thing on. I hope it's on. Turn this other one off. Nothing worse than having phones ring when you silent mode on. Okay. Daniel 9. We're loving Daniel. Daniel, the man, after God's own heart, he was so he was so righteous. Although Daniel was a sinner, which he's gonna well acknowledge. Daniel's gonna tell us today in chapter 9 about what a wicked sinner he was. But did you know that God never mentioned Daniel's sin? There's only two, two, people, two, only two people in the Bible that didn't mention their sin. It was Daniel and Joseph. Now, we know they were sinners. Daniel sure admitted he was a sinner here. He sure admitted he was a sinner here. Yeah. Let's look at it. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asarias, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Okay, um, what was the first major empire that we read about here in, in, in Daniel? What, what was the first major empire? The golden head. What was it? Babylonians, yeah, Babylonians. Uh, who who uh, uh, who was the uh, ruler? Nebuchadnezzar. Now we have the the uh, the Mede Persian Empire. It's a duel. Medo Persian. And uh, King Darius is of the Medes. Over the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. So now, who is, uh, who is Daniel quoting here? Who, who did he say he's quoting here? He was reading a book of what? Come on, church. You see, it's right there. Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet, wasn't he? Huh? Come on, wake up. Let's 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 get with it. We're trying to learn something here today. That he would accomplish seventy years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Okay. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek. Who Daniel was seeking God. How do you seek God? What does it say here? By prayer. Well, you do seek him, you hear from him by reading the Bible, Joanne, you're right there. But how does God hear from us? Prayer. Yeah, I got prayer, got it? We seek God to get a hold of him by prayer, or we learn from him by the Bible. By prayer and supplications with fastings and sackcloth and ashes. Now, what does it mean? Fasting in sackcloth and ashes. What, what, what does that mean to you? When you see that in the Bible, what does that signify to you with sackcloth, uh, uh, fastings in sackcloth and ashes? Uh, what does that signify to you about the state of Daniel? Come on, church. Huh? Well, uh, spiritual poverty, I guess we could say that, but it's, a, it's coming in humility and as a wicked sinner. When we come in sackcloth and ashes, we come in humility as a wicked sinner. Did you know what? You can't come any other way. The only way you can come to God is in sackcloth and ashes. People tell me, I ain't going to your repentance some of you, you won't go to the repentance thing. <laughs> you think you're somebody. 
You don't need repentance. I've met many uh, unaltered Christians who are not. They're so-called Christians. Some of you, you never hit this altar. You know why? You think you're too good for it. Why? You're a big shot Christian. You, you wouldn't kneel at the altar in, in front of these sinners. Oh, shut up. You ain't no better than anybody in here. You hear what I said? Shut up. You ain't no better than anybody in here. We ain't nothing but a bunch of filthy sinners with wicked hearts. I'm so sick of Phariseeism in Christianity. I can't come to your church, Farga. Because you you got them nasty folks off the street. They just they're nasty like you. Huh? Yeah, they're just nasty like you. High minded. Well, I want to, I'd come to your church, Pastor Varga, but, you know, I just don't fit in there. Uh, you know why you don't fit in here, you YouTubers and, and, and uh, Facebookers? You think you're too good for Varga's church. You think you're too good to rub elbows with street people. Shame on you. God help your wicked soul. Told you I wasn't going to put my sport going on today I feel mean sometimes I feel mean and want to tell the truth amen huh yeah yeah I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession confession kneel and pray repent today confess your sins I had someone recently tell me I'm clear right now. Oh, you got sins against you. You know what you have to do, Joey? Search me, oh God, and try me. See if there be a wicked way in me and lead me in a way of everlasting. You do too, Jake. Joanne. Yeah. Donnie. Huh? Will. Joe. Gary. Sharon. You hear me, Sharon? Yeah. Everybody, hit the altar. Did I name you, Donnie? Yeah. I didn't want to miss you. <laughs> who'd, I, who'd I miss? You miss Varga. Varga, you too. <laughs> Varga, too. Guess it's too much for him. He took dropped back around. I must have been. He must have said, "Oh boy." <laughs> that boy looked, turned around. He leaving. <laughs> Let the dude go. I don't think he can take hard preaching. <laughs> he, can, you can call him back here, but he ain't coming. He ain't coming. Uh, he'll be back later after the preaching. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to put my coat on? I won't preach as hard. <laughs> you want me to really preach a, a barn burner? You know what I'll do if I preach a barn burner? I'll pull my shirt off and be bareback. <laughs> and remember, if I do take my shirt off, them muscles are for your protection, not for your harm. So just remember that. Remember that. My muscle be for your protection, Joe, not for your harm. You understand that, Gary? Yeah, for your protection. Ladies, you have a protector here then. You know that. <laughs> I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keep the covenant of thy mercy. I need mercy. If I get justice, you know what happens to me if I get justice? I go to hell. My just payment and your just payment, everybody's just payment is the fires of hell. That's what I deserve, but I ain't getting hell because you know what? I, I begged for mercy. Huh? Hey, uh, remind me, I got that stuff in my car that you could put on your... 
it's supposed to help you sore much. It works for me. Remind me afterward, I get it out of the car. I got it. It's roll on stuff. And to them that keep his commandments. You know, if you cry for mercy and you get saved, you know what happens to you? The Holy Ghost comes into you. And then you learn to be submissive, and then you can keep the commandments. Do you know why you can't keep the commandments now? I'll tell you exactly why. You're a rebel. You're in rebellion against God. You won't listen and obey. You won't submit. You won't humble yourself. You know why? You're in rebellion. Guarantee you. Anybody that won't submit to God and his authority and the commandments is, is a rebel. How many of you got some rebel in you? Get your hand up. Y'all do. Oh, yeah. And, and the slower you... The slower you put your hand up, if you didn't just shoot it up right away, you probably got a lot of rebellion in you because you you finally slipped up your hand because of shame. <laughs> you think you're pretty hot, but you know the preacher don't think you're so hot. And you know what else? God don't think you're so hot either. <laughs> Let's say this together. Okay, you ready? We're going we're gonna to do the first three words of verse 5. Got it? Verse 5, first three words, we're going to say them aloud together, okay? And I'll keep, I'll keep having you say them until everybody says them. The first three words, we're going to say them together. Ready? Yep. A one and a two and a three. We have sinned. Did I, was I the only one that said that? Did anyone else say it with me that time? One person. Who else? Just one person said it with me? One. Okay, well, it's two. Two out of 150 people said it. No, we ain't got 150. I don't know how much it is. I haven't counted it, but it ain't 150. Are you ready? How many of you say I'm ready? Raise your hand if you're ready to read these three words with me. Gary, you're going to read them? You're going to read them? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I need to do is get you in a foxhole someplace or let some bullets fly over your head and you'll become unatheist. All right, these three, first three words, we're going to say it together. Verse five, first three words. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. We have sinned. It wasn't good enough. Let's do it again. I want to hear you. Yell it out like I am. Ready? We have sinned. Come on, Joe. Are you a sinner? You are too a sinner. I guarantee you are. I know you're a sinner. You know too. Don't lie to me. Let's go. Yep. You ain't all as hot as you think you are. Pharisee. High-minded. <clears throat> Five, first three, ver first three words. We have sinned. Lord, this is a hard-hearted crew here. I wonder if they're that hard-hearted out there in the viewing audience. Probably so. Some of them got their arms crossed. You know what? You know what it means when you cross your arms? Rebellion. Rebellion. Okay, we're ready for the first three words of verse 5. He says, if you do this once more, I'm going to leave. All I can say is adios. Adios. Let's go. We have sinned. We got a wicked 
rebellious nation. We've got a wicked, rebellious, so-called Christian church today that is high-minded and haughty and won't come to Vargas Church because Vargas got the least, the last, and the lost. Which neither we have hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, I'm a modern day prophet. I'm a preacher. I don't foretell the future. I preach the Bible. There's no more future telling. That's all been done. Daniel did it. Jeremiah did it. All the prophets did it. The prophecies came in the Old Testament. All we are now is foretellers of the, of the Bible. There's nothing new. Some of these Pentecostal preachers, a lot of them, they'll tell you that they got something right from God and they're giving you something from God that's new. They're liars. The only thing to be preached today is the Word of God. That's why you need to have a Bible, which is a King James Bible in the English language. O Lord, verse 7, righteousness belongeth unto thee. Righteousness belongeth unto thee. You know what that means? Well, let's, in Romans it says, there's none righteous, no, not one. And this verse says, righteousness belong unto thee. Oh, so who's righteous if there's none righteous on this earth? God. So how about me, how many unrighteous people do we have in here? Raise your hand. Okay, okay. Why don't you have your hand up, Will? Yeah, I said, how many righteous people are here? Uh, I mean, if, if, I say, if uh, if you're unrighteous, raise your hand. That's what he said. Okay, okay. Unrighteous. No, no, unrighteous. We're unrighteous. But listen, but then I ask you this. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood, how many righteous people do we have in here? That's me, I'm saved. If you're saved... Because the Lord Jesus Christ has been made to be wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. Glory to God. Why aren't you sanctified? Why aren't you sanctified then if you're saved? What does it mean to be sanctified? Separated, separated, set apart from the world. You drinkers and smokers and shacker uppers. You spit in the face of God, shame on you. He has made unto you wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. Huh? Righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us, but unto us, Daniel, only two people in the Bible who doesn't name their sin, Daniel and Joseph, but he says unto us, him and all of us, Daniel says, confusion. Huh? Are you confused today? I'm looking out right now and I see a number of confused faces. You're troubled and confused. You know why? You're not submitting. You're a rebel. Confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries, whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass. What's a trespass? A sin. Because of their trespass that they have trespassed against who? Thee. Who do we trespass against? God. All of our all of our sins are against God. The Bible says, "O Lord, to us belongeth confusion." Why do we have confusion? Because of rebellion. Confusion comes from rebellion. How many rebels we got in here besides me? Y'all rebels. Y'all rebels.
Gary's got his eyes closed. He don't, he don't want me to point my finger at him. <laughs> to our kings, rebels, Nebuchadnezzar, to our princes and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. He said it again, sinned against thee. Sinned against who? God, we sin against God. God, we sin against God. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgiveness. Do I, de do I deserve mercy? No. Do I deserve forgiveness? No. How can I get it? Humble myself. Humble myself. Repent. Oh, that word repent is not a, it's not a familiar name and it's not a recognized name in so-called evangelical Christianity today. Mercies, forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him. There, that, uh, you say, Varga, you keep talking about rebellion. Daniel just said rebellion, didn't he? Huh? I'm just preaching what the prophet said. Huh? Oh, you can get mad at me if you want, but I'm just reading you God's word. I stand under the authority of the word of God. That's all I got is God's word. Though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. How many of you have been rebellious and not obeyed the voice of God? That's the Bible. Many times, many times. How many of you like me? Come on, you stinking rebels. Come on, you wicked sinners. Kneel and pray. Repent today. Every one of you that are in here today need to hit the altar. You says, I don't need to. Yeah, you don't think you need to, but you do. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his ways, the Bible way, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets, who gave us the word of God. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing. They might not obey the voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. The curse. You know what rebels get? The curse. What do, what do rebels get? What do rebels get? Answer me, church. The curse. What do rebels get? The curse. The curse. The curse. Rebel. Written in the law of Moses. First five books of the Bible, plus other places Moses wrote. And he hath confirmed his word. God has brought confirmation. Which he spake against, against us, against us, not for us, against us. Got it? Why is he against us? Because of our rebellion, because of our sin, because of our iniquity. And against our judges and judge us by bringing upon us a great evil. What could be more greater evil than the fires of hell? If that's what you want, you're going to get it. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath done upon Jerusalem punishment. And is written, the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet we meet, it says, see, Israel, they sin. He departed from his people, didn't he? They're a forsaken nation now. They're wandering all over the world. They're hated. They're despised. And they still won't repent. A few Jews get saved, but not many. They're rebellious people. Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord. They wouldn't pray. They, they wouldn't come to the old-fashioned altar and receive Christ, turn from their sin. They wouldn't accept Messiah that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore, you know what therefore means? Because you do that, I do this. That's what God says, therefore. Because you rebel, because you sin, I'll do this. You repent, I'll forgive. You rebel, hellfire. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil 
and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. What do we do? Go out and get drunk. Some of you that are right here today have been drunk this week. Been drunk this week. Obey not his voice. And now, Lord, our God, that had brought the people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten the renown as is thee, we have sinned and we have done wickedly. Daniel really laying it on, ain't he? I'm just preaching what Daniel preached. Huh? The man that was so sinless, but he sinned, that God never named one of his sins. He was that good a person. Him and Joseph. Only ones in the Bible didn't name their sin. He pretty heavy preacher, wasn't he? What am I preaching? Preaching his sermon, huh? Yeah. I'm taking Daniel's sermon on the ninth chapter of Daniel. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city of Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of their sins and the iniquities of their fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant, Daniel, and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon the sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord. Now, what do you think, church? Why will God have his face to shine upon us? Why? If we repent. Huh? If we acknowledge our sins. If we turn from our sins. Then he'll shine upon us. O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, like some do, think there's hot potatoes, but for our, thy great mercy. See, it's God's mercy, it ain't our righteousness. You need to repent. You need to come to an old-fashioned altar. O oh Lord, hear, O oh Lord, forgive, O oh Lord, hearken. And do defer not for thine own sake. Oh, my God, for the city and thy people are called by thy name. And then it's called the meaning of the 70 weeks, but I ain't going to go into. I'm stopping on verse 19. Tough sermon. That's because Daniel was a tough preacher, wasn't he? Yeah. I'll just repeat what Daniel said. If you don't like it, lump it. Go on to hell. If that's what you want to do, go on to hell. Go on to hell if you want to go to hell. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the grace of God. Oh, they had grace in the Old Testament. Moses got saved by grace. Abraham got saved by grace. Adam and Eve got saved by grace. Everybody in the Old Testament got saved by grace. No, 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 no. It's the age of grace now. No, I've been grace. Tons of grace in you. In fact, I think the word grace is more in the Old Testament than in the New. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse from sin in the Old Testament or the New. There's one church started in Genesis. Oh, no, 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 no. They got saved different in the Old Testament. Oh, shut up. Ain't no one ever been saved, but saved by grace through faith. Old Testament and new. I'm saved. Only one I know on earth that's saved for sure is me. Hope you're saved. You know if you are, you know if you aren't. If you aren't, why don't you get saved right now? This is a sinner's prayer. Repent here in church or out there in the viewing audience. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you trust him now? Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. 
He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. Pray this sinner's prayer right now and repent of your sins. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. And shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross. Rose in the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart. I'll turn from my sins. Receive you. As my savior. Thank you for saving me. Right now. Amen. Amen. And amen.